So I guess we're gonna be stuck in the garage for quite some time. 10 inches of snow the other day. Roads are all covered with ice patches and salt. Before we get into this video, I just got this product. Very, very cool. Check this out. From Rick Rack. I know a lot of you guys are gonna like this, especially you guys that carry a firearm with you. Check this out. It's a firearms holster from Rick Rack, all leather. But here's the kicker. It's not meant to be worn on you. So if you guys carry a firearm while you're on your bike, I'm gonna tell you, this is probably really good. You guys are gonna love this for long trips. If you guys do long trips on your bike and you guys carry a firearm, I guarantee you it starts digging in into your stomach or into the side, wherever you guys have it, especially if you're on a long trip. This is a fantastic solution. So check this out. You have to get these saddlebag safety bolts right here from Rick Rack because they're flat. So check this out. This is, I think it's two sizes, small and medium, but this is the small, that is the medium. And you take out the Rick Rack safety bolt, just like I did here. And you have it in there. You have a place to store your firearm. How cool is that? So you got to pick up the flat safety bolts uh, by Rick Rack and then your firearm will actually fit straight down in there with no problem. You, I don't recommend you using the stock hooks because they actually stick out a lot. But with these flat safety bolts, works fantastic. So this way you guys don't just drop your firearm in the saddlebag and it's shaking around all over the place. I think that's an excellent place to store it while you're on the bike, not when you're off of it. I don't ever recommend you leaving your firearm on your bike if you're gonna be away from your bike for any lengthy periods of time. If the bike gets stolen, well, guess what? Your firearm is gonna go with it, so you definitely don't wanna do that. But like if you're taking a long trip, eight, nine, 10 hours, whatever, or even five hours, and you don't want it digging into your side, that is a fantastic option and you could get to it super quick. So definitely check that out. I'm gonna leave you guys links down below in the description. I wanted to show you guys that. I thought that was really cool. Another thing is, I know I've told you this before in the video when I installed the Custom Dynamic Shark Demon Headlight Kit. That thing is amazing. Right now, you actually have to pre-order it on Custom Dynamics website in order for you to get it in a month. But I will have to tell you, Rick Rack actually has a bunch of them in stock. The last time I checked this morning, they had, I think, nine or 10 in stock. They do have them in stock. So if you want it like before Daytona or you want it in the next couple days, I'm gonna leave you guys a link to it so you guys could check that out as well. If you guys like that setup, they do have it in stock, but that's badass. I got inundated, literally inundated when I came back from Charlotte, North Carolina. I was the only one to do a ride review video on the brand new 2024 CVO Road Glide ST. And then we also just got back from Las Vegas. We are out there on the track. Make sure you check out those videos. We had the Road Glide CVO ST out on the racetrack. And then we took a beautiful ride to the Valley of Fire in Nevada on the brand new 2024 Road Glide and Street Glide standards. So I got inundated with messages, emails, um, you name it. I got inundated with questions. First question, biggest question was, am I going to trade Mad Max in? This is a 2022 Road Glide that I did pretty much everything to it. Am I gonna trade Mad Max in for a new 2024 model? That is a good question. That's the million dollar question. I've told you guys this in the past. I was thinking about it. I'm still thinking about it. I have to, wheels are turning. I have to weigh all the options and if it's going to be um, good because I have a YouTube channel. This is what I do. So it might not be the same answer for you guys. So you really have to take that into consideration. Everything I've done to the bike, most of it, or I should say almost everything on it was sponsored. So it's not the same for me as it is for someone like yourselves, where you actually have to you know, pay and get this stuff done. It costs a lot of money. So you know, just to kind of give you an idea, Mad Max right now, 
the the book value, I don't I don't know. I'm gonna think somewhere about 20, maybe 19, something like that. I could be wrong, ballpark numbers. But then again, it has about 50, 60 into it. So if you add that up, you know, 80, 80 grand, I know obviously depreciation and stuff like that, but there's still a lot into the bike. So uh, long story short, so if this is you, right? If this is you, you have a either 2020 or 19 or a 21, 22, 23, still in the older body style, and you're like me where you love your performance upgrades or just upgrades in general, you have spent this money, right? You probably spent 30, 40, $50,000 into it. And I'm not joking. People have even more, some even more. People have like literally $80,000 and I'm not even including the price of the motorcycle, $80,000 into their bike, new engine, turbo, mid controls, carbon wheels, seat, windshield, bar setup, list goes on and on and on, clutch setup, chain drive, it starts adding up. And I'm not even joking when I say people have like literally $80,000 into their bike. Swing arm, I mean, again, I'm, the list goes on and on and on. Oil cooler, you see what I'm saying? The more you look at the bike, the more you see, oh wow, lighting. Kind of answer that question, and I'm not answering for myself, that's gonna be um, another topic, another video for another day. But if you have done this much work to your motorcycle to, and if you have an older body style, I'm going to tell you straight out the bat, you're not going to get the money back. We all know that. And if you don't trust me on this, you're never, this is like a hot rod. You're never going to get the money that you put into it. You're never going to get that back. So whether you have already done a lot of work to your bike, or if you plan on doing a lot of work to your bike, make sure you always keep that in your head and understand and be perfectly, how should I say this, and be perfectly accepting of when you get rid of that bike, you're not even going to get back close to what you put into it. So if you are the type of person that has a lot of stuff done to their bike, I'm going to tell you, don't get rid of it, especially if you have low miles on the bike, enjoy the bike because the new 20, 2024 models, if you are that type of person that loves and has to upgrade their bike, it's going to be a while. It's going to be a year, two, three years before the market, before the aftermarket catches up to all the parts. We can't even tune a 2024 um, motorcycle right now. Uh, nobody has, you know, cracked the ECU yet. Nobody has really started doing it um, yet on the new 2024 models. So if you're that person that loves a bigger, higher power engine, or that loves changing out your bars and changing out the wheels and changing out, you know, the chain drive and the clutch and all that good stuff like I do, I would hold off. That's just my honest opinion. Keep your current bike that you have and just enjoy the living shit out of it. Put on a lot of miles. Don't just leave it in the garage and look at it and stare at it and do like these short, uh, you know, bar run trips. Get out there and enjoy the country. Get out there and go on some long couple week trips if if you can, and put on some miles so you could really enjoy the motorcycle that you created that you love. That's just my opinion. So now let's go a different route. If you have a older model and you really haven't done much to it, or say if you haven't done anything to it, I would definitely jump on it. And this is why. Because the new, and I'm just, let's start off talking about standards. The new 2024 Road Glide and Street Glide standard models are by far way better, way better than the older models. I don't care what anybody says, they are way better. Here's why. You have the gigantic TFT full electronic display there. You have all your instrumentation, you have GPS, 
you have everything on the one screen, including Apple CarPlay, all in one beautiful TFT dash. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is way better. It is light years away better than my current infotainment system. Nobody could argue that. I don't think so. So now the next thing is the standard Road Glide and Street Glide. They do have an upgraded front and back suspension. It is not the same suspension as the older previous year models. The front and the rear has been recalibrated, resprung, retuned for a better ride. And I will tell you without a doubt, it is better. It's better than Mad Max was when it was stock. Now, is it as good as the Road Glide CVOST? No, definitely not nearly close, but it is better, again, if you have a older model bike, the new 2024 Road Glide and Street Glide standards suspension is definitely way better. So now another huge thing is the looks. I mean, me personally, I know there's still a lot of people or some of you, you know, just don't like change. And I, I guess I could get that. But me, I like change. I, I like new. I like being, you know, I like having things change and innovate and, you know, up kind of more up for our times. I love the new body design on both the Road Glide and the Street Glide standard. I think it is nicer than this. I just like the lines of the front fairing, the tank, the bags actually have more space. So for me, I definitely love the new body design better than the older models. So now another thing is the Road Glide and the Street Glide standard models come with a 117. So some people were saying it's, you know, it's the same 117, but yeah, it's a 117, but it's not the same 117 as previous years. The new 117 on the standard 2024 models has actually, I believe, three or four percent more horsepower than the previous models. Yes, you're getting a 117, huge difference from the 107 to previous standard models, but it's not the same 117. The new 117, three or 4% more horsepower. I've ridden it in Nevada. We did like a 200 mile trip. That thing moves, I'm telling you guys, it is really fast. And another thing, you have like ride modes and that thing in sport mode is absolutely amazing. It is really fast. So I would have to say, if you're that guy that didn't do a lot of modifications to his bike or didn't do anything, I would jump. I would jump on the opportunity to get out of the older model and into a newer model, especially at the price point that they're at now. I think it's a definite win-win. So now let's go to the last question. Should you go for a Road Glide Street Glide standard or should you jump up and get the Road Glide CVOST? So a lot of people been asking also if you're a Street Glide person, hmm, are they going to come out with a Street Glide CVOST? The answer is I don't know. I, I really don't know. Do I see it happening? Possibly, I'm not sure. You probably, you're just gonna have to wait for that answer. But the question is, should you either go for a standard model or jump up to the CVO Road Glide ST? I'm going to have to say, in my opinion, I would just go for the Road Glide CVO ST. And here's how I look at it. If you're not going to do any kind of upgrades to your motorcycle like ever, and you don't care about the power, the handling, the weight, your bike is a standard road glide or street glide. It's plenty for you. Now, if you're the type of person that is either going to upgrade your motorcycle, as in suspension, bars, and power, maybe a stage one or stage two, I would definitely go road glide CVOST, without a doubt. And here's why I say that. Here's how I look at it. If I purchased a brand new Road Glide standard and I wanted to do the T-Bar, I'm just gonna throw some things out there. A T-Bar Wolf Pro Kit setup like I have on my bike, that right there is $2,500.
And then say if I wanted to upgrade the suspension, that right there is about 3,000. Say I wanted to do uh, a stage two to the 117, that right there is probably 3,000. And say I wanted to shed some weight off of it with some carbon components, that's a few grand right there. And that's not even including labor, that's just like for the price. You're almost at the difference between a standard road glide and street glide and the difference between the road glide CVO ST. So if you're going to do those upgrades and you really don't necessarily care that it has to be like aftermarket parts and components, if you just want the T-bar setup, if you just want more power, if you want a better suspension, I would hands down go with the Road Glide CVO ST because you're going to be spending that money and possibly even more and let alone forget about the braking system. The braking system on the CVO Road Glide ST is fantastic. Plus you have the inverted fork. You're going to be spending if that, if not more than $16,000, the price difference that you have between the standard and the Road Glide CVO ST, you're gonna be spending probably way more than that just upgrading your bike to get it to the CVO ST standard or level, if you hear what I'm saying. And here is the biggest kicker if you upgrade, your standard 117, your standard Road Glide or Street Glide, you're not going to have a warranty on it. The minute you touch that bike, the minute you touch the ECU, you are done with a warranty, you're voided. I get that question a lot. Yes, if you upgrade your bike, whether it's stage one, stage two, whatever, big bore kit, and it's not a Screaming Eagle or Harley Davidson tune, if you take it to a shop and they actually do a dyno tune on it, you're gonna lose your warranty, no matter how you look at it. So that's why I am recommending to go, instead of doing all the upgrades to a standard, jump right to that CVO Road Glide ST because you really have a phenomenal, phenomenal bike. So a couple YouTube channels already actually did some reputable channels. They actually already did some dyno runs and they're getting about 115 horsepower and about 130 foot pounds of torque to the rear wheel on a CVO ST road glide. That's kind of the equivalent in having a 114 motor with a stage two. You're probably equivalent. It's very, very close. Just so you guys understand the power levels you're getting at the rear wheel. If you have the 117 on a standard and did a stage two, you're slightly going to have a little more power and torque at a stage two level than the 121 that's on the CVO Road Glide ST. But like I just said, here's the thing. With a CVO Road Glide ST, you have a full warranty. You have excellent suspension, inverted fork, tremendous braking with those big 320 millimeter disc rotors and your four piston Brembo calipers. The bike only weighs 800 pounds. You have the beautiful, obviously, body design on it. You have the amazing infotainment system. So for me, if it was a question of one or the other, should I go standard or CVO ST? I would probably say CVOST, my opinion. Have the warranty, have all the performance, have the lightness of the bike already, the new body design, the new infotainment system. I just, for me, I just think it's a no brainer. Unless, again, unless you want the aftermarket parts and you're going to be changing out everything, you know, doing a stage two, doing a big board kit, you know, carbon wheels, you're gonna go maybe a different way of the suspension front and back. That's the only way I would say get the Road Glide and Street Glide standard models if you're going to build up another bike like this. In my personal opinion, how the prices are at now, I think the Road Glide CVO ST is if you want a full warranty, if you want great performance, great power, great looks, I honestly think these, at the price point, I honestly think that the Road Glide CVO ST, for the price, 
it just, it's a no-brainer. I think it can't be beat. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope this video helped you guys to kind of make your decision. But let me know in the comments. I want to know what you guys think. Did I miss something? Do you guys think differently? I would appreciate you guys leaving those comments down below. Check out the links to the Rick Rack holster and also to the Shark Demon headlight. It'll be down below in the video description. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.